Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum, and welcome to a very different looking uh, episode of Found Footage Fridays. Um, happy Friday. How was your week? Um, I am still in recovery. I am work from home, thank God, because I'm still having some good and bad days. Um, and uh, God, I think other than that, my, my week just like... I spent all day Tuesday thinking it was Wednesday, which is, is never fun. Um, yeah, so this isn't going to be a super long video today. Um, it's going to be kind of a short um, update on Found Footage Fridays as a series on Voices, um, as well as um, I'm going to just, instead of covering a movie this time, I'm going to just talk about, you know, kind of some general thoughts about Found Footage as a subgenre, things I like, things I don't like, things I look for, preferences, thoughts on you know, the sub sub genres, things like that, just a couple of little things to kind of get to know what I'm looking for when I talk about found footage or where I'm coming from. Um, and I just want to say, so I, I've been doing voices uh, for, I think, three years, right? So three years in February. Um, and I started out doing it on my own because I really just didn't trust the internet. And I didn't know a lot of people to talk horror with. And so I just kind of assumed it would always be just me talking to just myself. And I hoped for the best with it, maybe reaching people that were interested or or wanted to engage. Um, and, and in case you're unaware, um, that has changed drastically. Nope, that hurts my back. Gotta put my foot back down. Um, and so, you know, it took about a solid year of, of doing videos and content before I really started opening up to letting um, people come do stuff with me and or asking people to come do stuff with me. And it's really grown into something. I mean, I, I'm so proud of where it is. Um, you know, our, our channel is still very small in comparison to a lot of other channels and it's still growing and it still um, has a lot of, of things that we have yet to accomplish that we're looking forward to. But it's something that myself and now Steve are, are really, really proud of and we're really passionate about and we care a lot about it. Having said that, when you do content, in case anyone's not clear, being a content creator is not easy. It is a huge time suck to do content. Um, you know, all, most all of us are, are, are still doing big kid jobs during the day. A lot of us are parents. I'm a single parent. Um, my partner and I do not live together. So it's, I do everything on my own. And it's difficult sometimes, you know, we do the lives and stuff at eight o'clock or I try to record at eight o'clock. Um, and that means I have like a hard time when, when I have to get my son to bed. And, and it's just, it's very time consuming. And as life changes, your bandwidth for what you can and can't do change. Um, and that means that you don't always have time to do the things that you really love and that you really want to do. And you have to sacrifice them, even if you really don't want to. Why am I saying that? So um, moving forward, I'm very sad to, to tell you this or to even say this out loud. Um, Tom Reimer is not going to be able to be a co-host on Found Footage Fridays anymore, um, at least for now. Um, I, Tom, you know, I met Tom through social media. I was, I followed him as an author. He was a found footage junkie like me. So in March of 2021, I did a found footage live with me and Tasha and Zach and some other there's some other people there. Brandon Applegate was there. And um, and we just had some really great conversations about found footage. So when I knew that I wanted to do this series, because it's such a big deal to me as a found footage junkie, um, to me at that time, there was no one else I could have thought would have been more perfect for it. And so, um, you know, we're coming up on almost, um, well, about, about like, what, like a year and a half. So coming up on about a year and a half of doing content together, Tom and I have had some incredible conversations. We've become really good friends. He is a great support for me and the community. And, and I do everything I can to support him. And, and all of those things aren't changing, right? So the only difference is it's just really hard to find time right now to do content. And so it's better, um, you know, that he can focus on things like his family and things that he needs to do and other things he wants to do and, and just kind of let, um, let this go for now. Um, now that doesn't mean that you're never going to see Tom again. Um, I hope to find reasons to have him back. I hope that, you know, he can be a guest on found footage Fridays or maybe come on when we do the hundredth episode live or, or whatever, you know, and, and do future things together because I really enjoy working with him. And I am very, very sad that, um, that he is not going to be around anymore. Um, it's a very, um, 
respectful said though, right? I, I love Tom. I'm very, I'm very happy that he was able to be honest and communicate his needs to me and that he was able to, to talk to me about it. And we were able to, to just kind of decide like, or to, you know, to agree like this, this makes sense. It's okay. Like, and it, it really is okay. Like there's, um, nothing is going to change on my end as far as, as wanting to work with him and keeping him involved in things. So, um, so moving forward for found footage Fridays, you still get episodes every Friday. It's just that now it will be Steve and I doing found footage Fridays. Um, Steve has been very, very sick this week and he had a lot of, um, recording commitments and it was really difficult. So instead of trying to squeeze in filming on top of him, really not feeling well, um, I just told him I would do the update and and talk a little bit about found footage as a subgenre and what it means for me. Um, and um, so he and I will return next week to talk about Paranormal 4, Paranormal Activity 4. We are going to be talking about, um, I think all of them in the series is the plan. So we'll still continue that, um, kind of that deep dive into that franchise uh, next week. So no worries on that. This is just a little tiny little break. Um, so Steve could could take some rest. Um, he was also a guest on Sledgehammer Horror yesterday. Um, by the time you watch this, it'll have been yesterday um, on their live for, um, you know, they deserved better top 10 for um, horror people who died who deserved better. Um, if I remember, I will put a link for that so you can go back and, you know, retro actively watch it. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much the update on found footage Fridays. Uh, the content itself isn't changing. It's just a face lift, face change. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, I, I just wanted to be transparent about that because it's going to be really obvious, um, to the people who watch all the time that like, well, where's Tom? And I don't want anybody to worry, right? I don't want anybody to think that something negative happened. I don't want anybody to worry that Tom is hurt or sick or otherwise incapacitated. Everything is is great. Um, and and Tom will always have a place on Voices from the Mausoleum, always. Um, so yeah, stepping away from that, I just kind of wanted to talk a few minutes about um, kind of my my thoughts on the found footage subgenre, which I, I know I say, I talk about that and my thoughts on found footage um, every Friday, right? But I wanted to kind of talk about it as a genre versus movies themselves, um, if that makes sense. And so when I think of found footage, I think of really two components. I think it's divided into two. I think there's like real legit movies that are found footage films. And then I think that there are, on the other half of that, I think there are films that are in a found footage style. And what I mean by style is films where they, they come out of the camera perspective and they're suddenly like third person regular, like where it's not like a security camera or a drone or something that could still have been footage. Um, or it's more of like those, uh, those mockumentary style. Um, cause you know, sometimes like horror in the high desert is, is a great example of a melding of the two because they use both. They use found footage and they use this mockumentary style that I just think is just so crazy effective. You know, Savage Land, Lake Mungo, Horror in the High Desert. I am the Poughkeepsie tapes. Jesus, I'm here for all of those. I the mockumentary style is is one of my favorite sub sub genres of found footage. Um, but it is absolutely more of a style than true found footage. So it gets away with a lot more things like music and editing and um why are you still filming? And, and they, it gets away with a lot of that stuff because it's in the style of and not 100% true to, um, you know, and, and there's there's things about found footage as a subgenre that when I think about it, I think this is found footage. And that, of course, it's in the name means it was found footage, right? Um, I think that's um, like, obviously, you know, in Cage Dive, they recovered the camera in the water, semi-plausible, right? It went into a shark but it's fine. Um, that was slightly spoiler. Sorry. Um, but it's found footage. So you should automatically go into found footage movies, assuming everyone dies. If they don't die, I'm usually like, but why? Cause it's supposed to be found footage. It doesn't work if you just have the footage cause you survived anyway. Um, you know, and, and so like when they, when they're, when you can say like, yes, this is found footage, you know, like when you get that creepy message at the top, that comes up in the, that type font, right. Where it's like, the following is blah, 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 or is based on, or is compiled to footage from found from blah, blah, blah on September, blah, 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 you know, typical, 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 typical tropes for found footage, um, intros in that sense. Those are things that, um, that just like set the mood for it. Um, the other thing is when I'm thinking about found footage as a whole, and the things that make it found footage is, um, I already said the bad ending technically, and I already said, you know, it has to be found. There's um, 
is I'm looking at the reason why you're continuing to film and how plausible that is. Um, you know, it's funny because we talk about that so much on found footage Fridays about like, why are they still filming? There's really extreme examples of this where the rest of everything surrounding it is so good that I'm willing to like, let it go. Like I'm a lot more lenient about that than some people. Um, a great example. I just revisited Cloverfield for the first time since it came out and it makes absolutely zero sense. Why those people are still filming shit makes zero sense is that would never happen in real life. Um, and however, it was such an action-packed, fun movie. I really did not care for the characters, but the but the scene, the story, the aliens, I'm here for all of that. And, you know, we get a really cool shot of an alien because they were too stupid to stop filming. And I appreciate that. It's, one to, it's a great way to take one for the team. Um, but those are things I look for. And, and, and in Found Footage 3D, which I cannot recommend enough, they talk about, um, well, we got to have a reason why we're just filming. And they do this really neat trick in that movie where they have to keep filming because it's the only way to see the monster. And it's such a small nugget of story that just makes the rest of it make sense. And I really look for that. Um, it just needs to be believable. The best thing about found footage is that you can question whether what you're watching is real or not. You know, when you're watching Terrifier or, um, you know, like I just started watching Evil on Paramount Plus, you know that it's not real. But when you watch found footage, really solid found footage will make you question it. And those mockumentaries, side note, are perfect for that because there are so many times in those where I have to stop and go, this isn't a real documentary, right? Like Blackwell Ghost did that to me. The Poughkeepsie Tapes did that to me. Savage Land did that to me. Like they were so well articulated as documentaries that you're just like, is, is this based off something that actually, you know, and, and then that makes it even more unsettling, even more scary, even more effective. And I just appreciate that so much. But um, yeah, so those are things I kind of look for. I think one of the big things that kind of bugs me is the found footage movies that stick to most of the found footage rules, quote unquote, but they have music. And I'm like, oh no, like found footage movies can't have music. That doesn't make any sense. Who is doing that? Um, now some found footage, more like indie projects I've seen that really want to include music will do things like this has been edited, you know, for, um, this has been edited. So it's, you know, like it, it's open about the fact that they added music, they clip things together and I'm okay with that more or less. Um, but one of the, and I can't even believe I'm even going to say this because I really was just not a fan of this movie, but Deadstream is the perfect example of an, a creative way to kind of get around that rule. Right. Because he makes his own music. He pushes the button on the thing just to have his own music while he's recording. I think that's brilliant. Um, and, and, and on top of that, it's, it's just another positive. I, I really am a big fan of all this content, creating live streaming stuff that's really being, um, just more recently used in found footage. I think it's such a smart thing to include. Um, I've seen Deadware recently. Um, I saw, um, God, this really good one called, um, Tom and I covered it called live scream where it like takes place, um, during a gaming live, live stream. I almost said live stream, live stream. Um, and it's just brilliant because for those of you who aren't familiar with live streaming, when you're done, um, depending on what platform you use, it stays when you're done. So when we live stream on YouTube, it's there forever until we delete it or something bad happens to the video. Um, now I think on Twitch, it goes away after so long or something like that. I don't, I don't use Twitch that often. So not hundred percent, but it's just such a smart thing to do. And I really love this like new wave of found footage where they're like utilizing a change in technology. Like I mentioned earlier with drones and security cameras and social media content, like webcams and chat room things and live streaming. I just think it's so brilliant. I love it so much. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I really, I really just think that it's such a creative subgenre. And that's not to say the others aren't creative. Cause I mean, I love horror because it's a creative genre and, and because we can do so much with it. But to me, found footage can be really limiting and you really have to dig to be able to pull off some of the things that you want to pull off because they're usually lower budget. Usually there's big pictures. We know that. Um, but there's, it's usually lower budget. It's it usually has like, you know, they have to use all practical effects that they may or may not be able to make look really good. It's all about like just creating this full fledged story. That's enough to make people uncomfortable or make, you know, make people scared or make people think about it for days after they watched it or whatever. And you have to do it on a super tiny budget and you got to get creative. And it's such a great, like, step in the door for like new directors, new writers, new producers, new actors and actresses. And I think that it's, it's very, um, even though we have these like major production companies that do found footage, obviously, um, 
this is more to me like found footage is more like the indie subgenre because it's just such a great way for for filmmakers to get in their stories and to make films and um i'm really just loving that people are finding things to love about found footage you know we've come a long way since the shaky days right and, and you know paranormal activity introduced the standstill cameras um and i think that that was great and i'm sure that standstill is not correct but here we are. Um, Y'all, I do good just to plug my com my camera up and make my microphone work. Um, but, you know, and, and Blair Witch was shaky. Cloverfield is really shaky. But I remember so many people back in the day saying that, like, they hated found footage because it was, like, so shaky. And there's, I have a couple of thoughts on that. One, I think we've perfected that art because now you have things in your cameras and, or, I mean, in your phones and on your, uh, your digital cameras and your recording cameras or whatever. And, um that stabilize it so that it's not as like jarring, which is cool. Um, but I think we've also come around to doing the other things, like I mentioned before, using different technologies to kind of create the same thing as found footage, but not making it so reliant upon a person holding a camera, which is just smart filmmaking, in my opinion. Um, but the other thing is, right, like if you're in a, if you're in the woods, hypothetically speaking, because I'm not going in the woods, I've seen enough. I know. Mm -mm. Um, and something like horrific is chasing you. I don't think that your first instinct necessarily would be to make sure that you capture a clear shot of you running through the woods. So while it may be jarring to some viewers that it's shaky cam, it's also the most realistic way to do those shots because the natural response is going to be to lower it and just run. And so you're going to get crazy shots and crazy views and it's going to be bumpy and stuff. But I just love that people are, are really coming around to it, especially after Deadstream. Deadstream seemed to have kind of really, and the VHS series, the VHS series starting specifically with 94, I noticed, and then 85, or 99, 85. Um, you know, I, I don't, 94 was the best of those. Um, you couldn't pay me to think otherwise. And then, um, you know, Deadstream really brought in this kind of like resurgence for this, this genre. And people are now asking for top 10 recommendations and tell me about some found footage movies. And I love that people are going back and discovering films that I've been talking about that I've been in love with for 20 years. It's great. And it's such a good feeling. Um, to know that I was cool first. You know what I'm saying? Because found footage has always been cool. You guys just didn't want to hear it for the longest time. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a quick channel update as far as um, found footage Fridays and specifically, and also um, just kind of talk a little bit about my thoughts on found footage as a subgenre as a whole and, and what it offers to the viewers. Um, and I, and I want to go ahead and say this too, um, for all the people who show up every week, who share the video, like, comment, engage, watch, interact with Tom and I. I mean, when Tom and I took a break uh, for Christmas, because I, I in the future, I won't be doing any content in December unless it's pre-recorded. Um, I just decided that it's better for me to take a break and to use that time to focus on my family. Um, and so it's that's going to be the case moving forward. But when we took a break, there were people reaching out to make sure that like Found Footage Fridays wasn't over. And I was like, no, no, it's not over. But I just want you to know any of those things, like, share, comment, um, interact, it, uh, reached out, talk to us, like our post, anything like that. It means a lot to me and Tom, and it's, it's, it means a lot to Steve as well. Um, we put a lot into it. We take what we do very seriously. Um, it's definitely for fun, but it's something that we just feel very passionately about. And we really, really appreciate you hanging out with us and um, and kind of going on the found footage journey with us, giving Rex, asking for Rex. Um, you know, we're here for all of that. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has continued to make this show this series the most consistently successfully viewed show on the channel so far um and i'm really proud of that you know i i voices is my baby and now it's you know i'm co-parenting with steve so now it's our baby but found footage fridays is, is my baby um it's the first intro that i ever created and edited together myself it was my first major series idea um that i wanted to do on a consistent basis and um, it just really was a game changer for the channel. And it will always be very near and dear to my heart. And um, I just, I'm, I'm thankful that you guys are, are a part of that and that you want to be a part of that. So I just wanted to say that as well. So, um, but yeah, no sweat on, on our Found Footage Fridays. We're going to continue to pump those out every Friday. Steve and I will be back next week talking Paranormal Activity 4, um, which if you're not familiar is not one of my favorite ones. So if you want to hear me complain and, and, um, and bitch about a paranormal activity movie or come share reasons why, you know, we should, I should love it more. I should value it more. Um, definitely check that episode out next Friday. Um, yeah, that's all I have for this episode. Um, thank you again, everybody for sticking with us. Um, this, this channel, this series, 
really, really special to us. And we are really excited to see what else we can do with it. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, Steve and I will see you next Friday. Thank you.